Welcome to another uh, episode of our series, Tell Me About Your Favorite Bible Passage. I'd like to start off today by looking at one of the figures of speech that's used in the Bible uh, for, for itself, for God's Word, for the Bible. And in, in this case, it's not a metaphor, it's not a simile, it's, it's, it's kind of a contrast. You know, this time of year, we, we begin to expect to see some, some pretty radical changes in the weather and in, in the vegetation uh, around us. And, and so what you're looking at right here is, is part of, of my mother's flower garden. And, and you see things are, are, really, are really dying back. Uh, things that were so vigorous and green and healthy and growing. And, and even the, the flower blooms themselves have started to, uh, have started to dry out and, and just look, well, frankly, dead. And the Bible talks about this, and it says, you know, <clears throat> all people are like grass, and their glory is like the flowers of the field. And this idea is repeated twice. It's in, in Isaiah chapter 40 and also in, uh, in 2 Peter. It says, all people are like grass, and their glory is like the flowers of the field. But the Word of God endures forever. So our, our guest today is, is somebody who, who has found uh, enduring value in, uh, in a couple of parts of, of God's Word in particular. Uh, it, it's helped her through some tough times and, and given her something really to hold on to as, as she fights against uh, some of the enemies in, in her life, kind of a, a stronghold. And so I, I think you'll really enjoy her observations and insights based upon her favorite Bible passage. Go ahead and start recording and say, hello, class. We're so glad you could be with us today. We have a special guest, Mary Beth Brinkerhoff. And Mary Beth and her husband, Ben, work as campus ministers, the Oxford Church of Christ, to outreach to our local campuses, principally the University of Mississippi. And uh, they've been here for a little bit more than a year, I believe. Yeah. Yes. They have a dog named Theo. And Mary Beth moonlights or daylights, at, maybe you call it daylights because she worked days at a <laughs> local uh, cancer treatment center and works as a nurse there. Is that right, Mary Beth? Yes. Mm -hmm. And helps people with their chemo and that, that sort of stuff like that. So, anyway, we're, we're glad that we could pose a question to her today. Uh, first of all, let's we'll kind of warm up with what's your favorite book in the Bible? There are 66 books. Which one speaks to you the strongest? Well, um, I would say for my favorite book and my favorite passage, they kind of change sometimes throughout my life, different seasons. Um, but this one has been my favorite for a while. Um, honestly, uh, Philippians is my favorite book um, at the moment. And um, yeah, that's, I won't get into other questions, but yeah, that's my favorite book right now. So, And so does that grow out of a particular experience or season in your life? Yes. Uh, it became my favorite book of the Bible um, during college, actually. Um, and I would say the reasoning for that is probably because, I, I mean, I had a tough first semester as a freshman in college. And at the time, I thought I was very unique in that, but now working with college students and <laughs> talking with friends and stuff when I was in college, I realized that that is actually pretty common um, to experience, you know, just, I was experiencing loneliness and, um, you know, I had grown up with a great supportive family and youth group and tight-knit friends and then get to college and um, felt pretty directionless, I guess, just everything was just new and I was thrown in and just didn't feel like I had direction. And, um, so Philippians actually gave me a lot of comfort, um, and a lot of direction because it literally is just like words on how to, it's from Paul writing how to imitate Christ. And so it was a good start for me on kind of how to move forward in my life. And I would say, um, I've always loved Philippians since then. But especially now, again, with 2020 being such a crazy time, um, just with honestly just everything that's been going on throughout the year, um, it's it's a passage. I mean, it's a book that provides a lot of comfort for me and a lot of direction. Um, 
and well, kind it's, of... a, it's a letter uh, written from prison. So yeah. I guess depending on where you matriculated college that, you know, that could be uh, something that would make, make a, a uh, that would resonate as we say. Right. Uh, but, but, you know, what a, uh, what a joyful uh, letter it is, even though written from, written from prison. So that's, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's interesting to me that, uh, that Paul, uh, you know, evokes all these examples of unselfish uh, lifestyle in chapter two. He talks about Jesus and he talks about Epaphroditus and he talks about Timothy. And then he talks about, you know, how he, he counts everything that he had before he became a Christian as garbage in, in chapter three. And he gets right to chapter four. And there's this one little line. He says, uh, I, I want to beseech the audience in Tyche to get along in the Lord. Yeah. And some people have a theory that this whole letter, this whole beautiful, massive composition is, is Paul leading up to that one little request about you, you ladies, you. You need to get along better. And that's, to me, that's always been a, uh, you know, it, it's had a lot of impact to just think about it that way. Although I'm not saying that's the only way to think about it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, I'm yeah, actually, I, I don't know about that way, but that's that I could definitely, that's very interesting. And I think it's, I think it's a cool, cool way to look at the whole book. Well, I really appreciate the fact that you leaned on the scripture uh, during your first few months uh, away from home, you know, whether you go off to college or military service or, or go off to work someplace or something. I think everybody realizes that those those first few months can be quite an, an adjustment, mm -hmm. no matter how ready you feel for it. It's 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 a, a time of, of big changes in your life and that sort of thing. Yeah. But anyway, you were you were talking about maybe talking some about a very specific set of verses from Psalm 18. Uh, let me put you on the spot. Uh, do you have that where you can read uh, read those verses for us? Sure. Yeah, I actually have my Bible over here. Okay, so. great, great. So we're just going to, I've been pulling it up on the screen for some of our previous interviews. But today, since it's just the first three verses, I think is what you said. So we're just going to let you read it to us and then. And uh, tell us uh, what you find so uh, important about that. Okay. Um, all right. So Psalm 18, one through three. I love you, Lord, my strength. My Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I called to the Lord who is worthy of praise, and I have been saved from my enemies. Yeah, so, that's one through. <laughs> that's that's beautiful. Uh, what what I mean there, but there are 150 psalms. So yeah, but what <laughs> makes this one? Um, well, so I I realized that I probably take it maybe in a way that it's not necessarily supposed to be taken. Um, especially it's there's a little at least in this Bible here there's a little part before the passage that says that David. Um, was writing this after the Lord delivered him from the hand of his enemies and from Saul. And so I realized that the <laughs> Psalm 18 is all about that or the aftermath of that. Um, but I kind of took the passage, especially one through three, what I just read, more as God kind of delivering me from like my internal struggles and um, I just think the imagery that is used there is really beautiful and like the way that God does that um, within me and kind of like a spiritual warfare thing and how God delivers me in that way. Um, and I, uh, that's kind of my take on it. And it's just been really beautiful and really powerful um, for me. And so again, this is just like Philippians this passage is not always my favorite, but it's definitely been um, on my heart, I would say at least for the past year or so. Mm -hmm. So um, one thing I hear you saying is that both of these uh, Philippians as a book and then Psalm 18, one through three, are places that you draw a lot of comfort and encouragement. Mm -hmm. But yeah. as you work through this, is there anything here that you find particularly challenging? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, Yes. So I, on a personal note, um, I deal with a lot of worry and a lot of anxiety and 
insecurity. And, um, and so I think this is why I find this so comforting, but also at the same time, um, it is a challenge. Um, and because it is a promise that God is um, our stronghold and he is our strength. And so I have to respond to that. Um, you know, I, I do have, I do struggle with worry and overthinking and everything, but I can't just live into that, especially because God has promised us these things and has, God has, you know, God is our refuge and he, um, is our stronghold. And so because of that, I can't just stay where I'm at in my worry and in my anxiety, you know, because I believe that God, um, is my safe place. I have to be willing to give all of, um, all of these things over to him. And to I'm really impressed by David's example of talking about God being his stronghold because, frankly, you know, he faced a lot of physical danger and he had to resort to real physical strongholds, you know, high places and walls. And he fought hand to hand combat with, with yeah. people. But, but he, he felt his real strength was not how sharp his sword was mm -hmm. or how skillful he was with his weapons, but instead his strength was with, with God. Mm -hmm. I was hearing a discussion the other day and the guy talked about how Goliath came out and taunted the Israelite army and said, you're servants of Saul. Mm -hmm. but when David went out to talk trash against uh, Goliath before he killed him, he said, you've defied the armies of the living God. He didn't say you defy the armies of Saul. And so, you know, it's, uh, it's interesting how uh, he, he, his, his whole concept was I'm, I'm tough stuff, but it's, it's because God is my stronghold. It's not because I'm, you know, five star anything. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, that's that's interesting that you uh, that you find a, a challenge here, as as well as uh, as well as some comfort. Are there some? Uh, you know, some people really want to get a hold of me today. <laughs> uh, is is there something here that that? Uh, you would like to ask a question about if, if God were here, if David were here, you'd say, you know, this place here, I've spent a lot of time thinking about it. And do you really mean it that way? Or something? is there, yeah. is there something that... Um, I guess I have two questions, maybe just one question, but one just, you know, what, what internally was going on with, with David as he was writing this, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because, um, um, well, and then another question is, um, we see a lot of imagery, and I mean, it's a psalm, so it's, you know, it's, there's a lot of illustration and everything going on, but kind of like my take on it, I know he probably didn't necessarily me mean it the way I'm taking it, but did he in some sense? Is it, is it more than just the physical, like, people, enemies that he is talking about? Is there more than just, you know, me the eye when it comes to this? Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. So I guess my questions would be towards... Uh, directed towards David. Mm -hmm. um, well, I think your idea of of seeing the uh, internal struggle as as warfare, as spiritual warfare, just like uh, external struggles that we might have, is important because we read the story of the life of David. You know, he he killed the giant, but then the giant temptation, the internal struggle of his own lust, is what killed what killed him. But he, it, it took him down. You know? <laughs> And, and so that's that's a real that's a real uh, battlefield that that Christians have to fight on is is that yeah. internal and you know the temptation of Christ you know he fights a real battle with Satan there at the very outset of his ministry so mm -hmm. you know I, I think people can identify with you in uh, in seeing that in that meaning there well if you had to create a work of art based upon Psalm eighteen one through three what would it look like. Would it be a painting or a wall hanging or a sculpture or a short story or? A, uh... um, I think it would be a painting and I get lucky because I'm not super creative, but this psalm kind of helps me out because it uses a lot of, a lot of words um, that make me kind of bring things to my mind. But um, I guess, you know, the word fortress is used. And so that's kind of like what I think of as a mighty like stone fortress that God is like protecting me with, um, or um, also I think the words, um, let's see, you know, refuge and stronghold. I kind of think also of a painting of like 
almost like drowning, like strong, like waters and stuff. And God is like being that stronghold that you can hold on to even mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when those things get tough and hard and you feel, you feel helpless. So that would be. Now, now Mary Beth, are you saying that you would paint a picture of a stronghold or that you would build a stronghold as you not build <laughs> i would paint i don't think i would particularly excel at either but i think painting i could maybe <laughs> do a little bit better job yeah. at so. you know but strongholds really were a thing militarily back then in fact i i get into sometimes uh get into sometimes reading about archaeology and a lot of the archaeology from bible lands it, frankly i find a little bit disappointing but there are they have found you know, definite ruins and remains of, of stone forts and strongholds and fortified cities and stuff like that. So it, it, it really, you know, it's, it's, I guess today we would say God is my aircraft carrier or something like that, you know, but yeah. uh, it, it was, it was a, a way of, of really feeling safe and protected, uh, you know, when, when people had that, uh, had that refuge. So that's great. Well, I, I really appreciate your sharing with us today, and uh, this, I think, is going to be a, a source of great interest and encouragement to uh, a lot of people. I, anything that, that you want to add at this time, our discussion, conversation? I, not really. I just thank you for talking with me, and it really, it, it forced me to really think more deeply about the verses that, you know, have been placed on my heart, and it's been, it's been really enjoyable for me, and so I really appreciate it. Well, you know, I think one thing I heard you say, and, and looking back to your college experience, is that this, going back to Philippians, this really helps you get through. And, um, you know, I think it's, I think you've done something there that's, that's important. And that is to, uh, as the Bible says, Old Testament says, raise an Ebenezer, you know, this is, this is, I got this far with God's help. I think a lot of times we, we lean on God during the tough times and when we get through, we forget about it. And the fact that you remember it, of course, you've been out of college a long time, Mary Beth, right? <laughs> anyway, the fact that you can look back and remember that and say, you know, that, that helped me through that tough first semester, uh, I think is a beautiful thing. And I, I commend you for that. So, well, we're, we're going to say goodbye and thank you so much and hope to see you in person again very soon. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye-bye. Right. Bye.